Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and I'm going to be going over UFC from Madison Square Garden uh, tomorrow, with, where I will be in attendance, and we're doing our weekly contrarian betting breakdown. And for those of you that are watching this for the first time, again, this is going to be hopefully or probably certainly unlike any other betting breakdown, because what we're trying to do here is not pretend that we know more than the public. We're not going to pretend that we can overcome the significant vig in sports betting. But when it comes to analyzing psychology and analyzing what the public is doing, uh, I feel as though we're pretty good at that. Uh, it, it reflects my, you know, my career is in, in managing hedge funds, among, among other things, that sometimes uh, being able to know what the public is doing and what narrative is really, really popular is even more important than knowing the underlying data. Um, and specifically when it comes to MMA, uh, I feel as though it is a sport right for this type of approach because what happens with MMA is that is that the betting public has a full week to kind of digest this stuff. And because we're, we're human beings, we'd love to think that we can make sense of chaos and, and create this, this, this overwhelmingly likely narrative of how a fight can go. And so sometimes over the course of a week, people will keep talking about it and talking about it and, and, and come up with this one thing, this one result that just makes the most sense. And if that's not enough, sometimes they'll say, you know what, uh, I'm not exactly sure who's going to win, but um, at least I do know that if this person wins, it will be this way, where if another person wins, it will be this way. So what happens is the public creates this very binary outcome, which yeah, in a sport that's ripe with chaos, it's just the wrong way to do it. And uh, those narratives that are most popular that are most you know likely sort of are typically the ones that are most overbet. so our concept is that we're going to figure out which way the public is going and then go not necessarily the opposite but throw out those props and those results and pick from what i guess logically are the positive ev results uh the positive ev outcomes and we've been very, very successful at that. And it's definitely a fun way to approach this. And uh, we're going to continue doing it. And again, uh, the purpose behind this video and all these videos, honestly, across all sports is, yes, it is important to, you know, give you something to sweat for this week. But hopefully if I'm doing my job, it's not my job, I'm not really getting paid for it. But if I'm doing it right, um, you guys are learning how to think and learning how to analyze things like this. Um, anyway. Uh, let's just get started and let's just go over the rules. We are going to be betting one thing every single fight. And no, betting one thing every fight is not the best money management in system in the world, but we don't care. The other thing is that we are going to bet one unit every fight. And for us, one unit is $180. Now, betting one unit every fight is also not the best money management system in the world. But again, we don't care about that. Um, the other thing is that what we like to do is, because we're being contrarian, I'd like to presume that the first 12 fights on the card, we are going to lose. So what we'd like to do is, in the main event, give you guys a sweat and make sure that whatever we do in the main event, you are getting at least 13 to 1. And no, that is not the best money management system in the world either, but it's a fun way to approach MMA. It's a good way to think about betting on MMA in general. And... Uh, uh, you will see me put in literally everything that I do. Anyway, let's just get started. Uh, let's talk about Dennis Bazooka versus Jamal Emmers. So this one, we, you know, uh, I'm pretty sure what, what we're going to do here. Jamal Emmers, coming off of his last fight, he fought Jack Jenkins and he was in Florida. And going to the final decision, he was actually something like a 12 to 1 favorite. Everybody was 100% sure that he won. And he got robbed. Uh, and that's pretty much the, the consensus. But they weren't really surprised because Embers typically has a very, very low fight IQ. And it wasn't really surprising that something like that could happen to him. Now, he's fighting uh, Dennis Bazooka. And I will tell you that I'm seeing a lot of kind of kind of like semi-sharp money coming in on Bazooka. Again, questioning Jim Embers' you know, fight IQ. And... 
the people that are coming in on the Emmer side are basically saying, listen, he's probably just a better fighter and he's going to win probably another boring decision. So the things that we really can't bet on here is the bazooka, just regular money line, or you cannot really bet Embers by decision because those are the, the, you know, the, the narratives that are just seem to be the most popular. And as a result, they're probably the most over bet. Um, but what we can do is fade this whole idea that Embers is passive and fade this whole idea that Embers is, you know, has a low fight IQ. And if anything, he'll maybe grind out a split decision or something like that. I mean, my thought is that if in fact he feels he got robbed, I mean, he's going to be even more aggressive this time. So, so we're going to go with Emmer's inside the distance here. And let's see what that price is. Emmer's uh, by TKO or submission is plus 250. Looks good enough to, for me. And again, we're doing everything from 180. So we will put that in right here. Is it going to let me? Yes, it will actually. Very nice. All right, next fight we have Joshua Van versus Kevin Borjas. Um, this one I think is, I don't want to say easy, but so Joshua Van is coming off a really, really strong, um, strong performance against Zuma Gulov, um, where it was really, really high volume and this, that, and the other thing. And then you have Kevin Borjas, who he does have knockout power, and his, his his props show that out. People are trying to bet him by by finish. And while some people are taking Borja, say some people are taking Joshua Van, the one narrative that has been thrown out throughout the course of this week is that Joshua Van, he didn't even start wrestling until like six months ago. And that becomes like an important point because apparently Kevin Borjas – that's his one real weakness is his takedown defense. So the, the problem for Joshua Van is that is that he couldn't even do it if he wanted to because he's only been wrestling for six months. So people that are playing Joshua Van are either playing him by decision or by by KO. And people that are playing Borjas are probably playing him by KO. So uh, these are the things that we can't bet. What we're going to do is we are going to full fade this, this non-wrestling narrative, and we are going to play Joshua Van by submission. So let's see. Joshua Van by submission is plus 500. That looks good enough for me. Let's put that in right there. Um, we can just bet this right now, I guess. Until it, until it gets mad at me for being in uh, on Zoom, we're going to keep doing this. All right, next, John Castaneda against Kun Yo Kang, uh, Mr. Perfect. Um, this this line started at something like at Castaneda, like plus 250, and it was cut at minus 250, and there's no reason why. I mean, Kyung Ho Kang, I mean, he's been really, really good recently. In his last fight, he came in as an underdog, and he took care of business in the first round. I mean, his only loss recently was to Ronnie Yaya when he basically just tried to wrestle Ronnie Yaya. So I'm not I'm not surprised that all the money is coming in on Jun Yo Kang. Uh, so we are just going to go ahead and take Castaneda. Um, now the thing is, is that Castaneda, uh, people that are playing him are probably playing him by uh, by decision here. So we again we are going to take Castaneda inside the distance. It's probably going to be a pretty juicy price. Let's take a look. Uh, Castaneda winning method. Castaneda by Tico submission plus 275 for 180. This is what uh if you watch uh what's the name of the Matt no one of my favorite uh podcasts is the Magic MMA podcast with Andrew Gomez and Magic MMA. And he likes to call this like the hipster play of the week. And that's kind of the Kim Hyo Kang is the hipster play of the week. All the wise guys are just coming in on him. And usually you like to fade stuff like that. Anyway. Moving on, we have Mark Madsen versus Jared Gordon. So you have Mark Madsen, who is an Olympic uh, wrestler. And the problem is he's got probably pretty bad cardio. He's 37 years old. And even in his, one of his most recent fights, he kind of abandoned it for, for, for striking. And Jared Gordon, I mean, he has had some really, really bad luck. I mean, he got robbed by Patty Pimlet. Um, not robbed by Patty Pimlet. He robbed in the Patty Pimlet flight. He was supposed to win that. He got robbed by a bad decision. And then he was actually beating Bobby Green in this first round. 
Uh, and then he got an unintentional headbutt, which basically caused him to get knocked out. Um, so Jared Gordon is really, you know, could have won his last two fights. And imagine if he got a win, I mean, over Bobby Green. Well, I was about to say that then how, how good is it that Bobby Green ended up beating Grant Dawson in the main event? Then again, if Gordon had gotten that win, then Bobby Green wouldn't have gotten that fight, but whatever. Let's just say that that Jared Gordon fight against Bobby Green certainly aged well. And, you know, Mark Madsen with his poor cardio, he's probably going to get like the first rounds, maybe get the first rounds. But uh, after that, it's basically going to be Gordon all day. So all of that is what everybody's saying. So all of those things are not bettable. What we can do is one of two things, okay? Now, you could be really, really tricky or really, really basic. The real basic thing, which is I'm probably going to do, is just bet Mark Madsen here. OK, because one of the things that Mark Madsen has going against him is that the judges really don't like wrestlers that don't do anything with their takedowns. So why would anybody put Mark Madsen in that type of uh, refereeing environment, referee environment? So there's another reason to play Mark Madsen. The one thing you could do instead, if you want, is you can wait until the end of the first round. This is going to be somewhat tricky, but. If you wait to the end of the first round, if it was clear that Mark Madsen did get a takedown and won the first round, what I want you to do is bet Madsen anyway after the first round. You probably have to get a you know, be, give up a little bit of odds. Um, but all I'm hearing the whole week is that it's a tremendous live opportunity. Wait for Madsen to win the first round and then bet on Gordon. So what we're going to do is wait for Madsen to win the first round and then bet on Madsen. Um, but the problem is that I don't know for sure that Madsen is going to win the first round, so I can't give that out here because I want to make sure to bet everything every fight. So let's just take Madsen plus the 180 and keep it simple. But if you are happen to be watching the fights and you do see that Madsen wins the first round, go ahead and bet him anyway uh, to win the fight. Lay a little bit of juice if you have to um, and fade what's probably going to be a popular play uh, that is playing Gordon after Madsen wins the first round. Nadim Sadikov versus v Vladislav Borchev. Okay, so here's the deal. You have Borchev, who's, a, who's an expert striker, and Sadikov, he has a really clear path to victory in, in wrestling, okay? Um, Borchev, he got taken down like 10 times by, uh, what's his name? By uh, uh, Mark Casey, like 10 times or something like that by Mark Davis. And the only fight he was able to win recently really was uh, against Maj Chate, which was a clear striker versus striking battle. Um, Sadikov, you know, does have apparently the wrestling to go to. And if he get, wants to get into a striking battle, um, it's probably a bad idea. So uh, that's the thing. Sadikov's probably going to go for the takedowns and get them uh, and, and, get, and get the win. So that's what you can't bet. You can't bet on Sadikov by decision, really, because that's part of the takedown route. You can't bet him by submission either. Um, so really, there's only two things you could do. You could play Borshev by KO, but that's what people are doing there. So what we're going to probably do is either Sadikov by KO, which would be pretty ridiculous, or probably a better idea, we're going to play Borshev by decision, okay? Because some people are playing Borshev, but no one's playing him by decision. Um, so that's going to be the overvalued piece or the undervalued piece. So that's what we're going to do. Borshev by decision plus 380. Let's go. All right. So it's not going to let me from now on, which is fine, but... Uh, after I finish doing the breakdown, I do promise that I'm going to uh, put all this stuff in. Uh, let's go back to MMA. Let's see. And which fight were we on? We were on... Okay, so we're going to play Borshev by decision. Okay, uh, Mateusz Rubeski versus Roosevelt Roberts. Um, so this is unfortunately for Roosevelt Roberts, a short notice replacement fight. And, you know, Rebeski has been just like killing people and it's just going to be kind of an easy, easy, either first round or maybe second round 
uh, dispatching of Rebecca. So those are the things we can't bet. Um, it, we can either bet Roberts, but I think that this is one of those lines they just made so big that you really can't bet either side. So we're going to play Rebecca by decision. Uh, it's going to be tough. You got to really hang in there with me, uh, Roberts. But uh, was there not even a, a line on him? It's like so funny. Winning method. Oh, there it is. Rebecca by decision plus 250. So we'll just put this in here for now. And we'll get back to it later. All right. So, so far we're doing well. I think we have five fights that we have absolutely no chance to win. That's really not bad. <laughs> All right, moving on. Or maybe six. All right, this one, I'm just so confident we're going to lose that we almost want to play two units on it. So we have Tabitha Ricci against Lupita Godinez. And here's the problem. The Tabitha Ricci really has no path to victory here. Because Lupita Godinez is not is the better wrestler, and she's clearly the better striker. Now, now Lupita Godinez, the only thing she's had trouble with is her fight IQ. But the problem is here is that some, where sometimes you would have wanted her to wrestle when she's supposed to strike, sometimes you're supposed to strike, you're supposed to wrestle. Here, if you want to know the truth, her easiest path to victory is probably just keeping it on the feet and winning a striking battle. Um but even if she abandons that, she probably has the wrestling edge also. So that's the problem. With Tabitha Ricci doesn't really have a path to victory here. So we're going to bet Tabitha Ricci. Tabitha Ricci plus 145. Who is doing this? I don't know. But Tabitha Ricci plus 145 for one. All right. Uh, moving on. Steve Urseg versus Alejandro Costa. This one I'm not too confident on, meaning that I'm not confident there's a big uh, a big lean one way or the other. All I will just say is this, is that I watch a lot of content, and of the, let's just say, 20 people that, we, that I follow, I haven't seen a single tout person expert actually pick Costa to win, as if Costa was a 30 to 1 underdog somehow, um, and he's only 1 plus 160. So he's got to have something. And that's really the best I can do with a fight like this. So let's just play him. Costa plus the 160. It's not, I don't even think I've heard anybody want to take him plus the 160. Not to mention picking him to actually win. So we're going to go with Costa plus the 160 for 180. All right, moving on. We have Diego Lopes versus Pat Sabatini. All right. This one, we're very clear about what is going to happen here, okay? Either Sabatini gets the takedowns, all right, and just basically rides out a decision, like keeping top control, or Diego Lopez gets either a KO here because he's so much better on the feet, or Diego Lopez gets a submission, all right? Um, so... What are we allowed to bet? Anything but that. So we could either play Lopes or Lopez. I don't even know how to pronounce it, really. Lopes by decision. Imagine if Lopes just keeps us on the feet somehow. It's going to be tough, actually. But Either Lopes by decision, or we could try Sabatini inside the distance. Okay? So let's see what those lines are. All right. Uh, Lopes by decision is plus... 500. Wow. 500. He can't win a decision here. Plus 500. Let's see Sabatini inside the distance, though, because that could be pretty, pretty, pretty cool. Also, Sabatini inside was only plus 275. No, nope. all right. We're going to try this. Lopes by decision plus 500. Let's go. I mean, the only thing I could even consider is Lopes by knockout. Is Lopes by knockout? If Lopes by knockout is more than plus 500, we're going to do that. Okay, that, that'll be the deal. Let's see. Lopes by KO plus 380. No. So Lopes by decision plus 500. That's the deal. Um, yes. Submission artist, better on the feet. I don't know how this is going to work. But maybe we get one of those uh, one of those fixed 
anti-wrestler decisions in our own favor. Maybe we get Sabatini who gets his top control, but Diego is so active off his back that even if he doesn't get the submission, they give it to him anyway. Sounds good to me at plus 500. Um, all right. Matt, the steamroller, Frivola versus Benoit Saint-Denis. So this, the only thing we're sure of here is that this is going to be a war and that someone is getting finished. Uh, Travola basically in his last two fights has knocked, knocked the guy straight in, straight out of the, straight out of the universe. So people are playing him by KO. So can't bet that. Benoit Saint Denis. I mean, he takes a lot of the heat, but then he'll probably have the wrestling advantage and he'll probably win by submission. So can't play either of those things. So the only thing you can do here is you could play Saint Denis by KO if you want, or you really want to get frisky, you could really fade everybody and play the fight goes to decision. Now, we could play one of these guys winning by decision, or we could be, or we could just play the fight goes to decision. Let's see what some of these odds are. Let's see, Frivola, Frivola by submission plus 1,200. I got to tell you, that is very frisky. That is very frisky. I wasn't thinking of doing this, but frivola has got wrestling himself, you know, and, and if, and if, I don't know, you know, if Santini goes for too many takedowns and he gets reversed, who knows? That's interesting. Let's see. Uh, fight to go the distance plus 275. Who's doing that? That has no chance to win, right? Boy, oh boy. We could really do this. We could play Frivola by submission plus 1,200 and live to tell the tale. So that's, it's either Frivola by KO, Santini by decision. Excuse me, Santini by submission. So we are going to play Frivola by submission. I like it. I, I really like it. All right, we're moving into we're on the main card now. Just a couple of more, I think. Um, so Mackenzie Dern against Jessica Andrade. Now I'm just telling you, I was so I, I was so confident in what I wanted to do here because for the first part of the week, it was all Dern, all of it. That 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 Andrade was on the way out. She was mailing it in. She wasn't even competitive, and Dern. We've even heard I've even heard the divorce Dern angle where since she's gotten divorced, she's committed more. So it was basically all Dern all week. And then in the last couple of days, all the sharps are coming out and saying, you know what? I just the, you have to play this uh Andrade plus the money line. She's just had the best, best competition. You really can't trust Dern. So um it's unfortunately not gonna be that easy. Okay. But what I'm still going to do is I am still going to play the Andrade side because I just think that the narrative that she is, you know, just done is just way too strong. So I think that the Andrade part of this is still the the uh, the more contrarian side. It's only a question of how we want to do this, right? So the player by KO or by decision, it's the same plus 450. So we're going to play Andrade to win by decision. Keep this thing on the feet. Just beat her up. You know, don't don't get too aggressive because then you end up getting taken down or whatever it is. Let's just keep it on the feet. Win by decision. Plus 450. All right. We are now at the – are we at the two main events? Yes. Sergey Pavlovic versus Tom Aspinall. Oh, you guys ain't going to like this. But I know what I have to do here. You just kind of have to. So you have two heavyweights who have literally never been out of the first round. Aspinall has. I'm going to do something that I never do. I, I'm going to rely on the fight IQ of Tom Aspinall. And this is, I'm being probably very, 
word I'm looking for? I think it's very racist to say, but people from England, I just feel as though because of their accent, they just seem so much brighter than other people. You know, whenever I, I think about, I talk about this a lot. When people give this, when people from Great Britain give a take, it just sounds so believable because of the accent. So I just have this, like, this, this, this concept that Aspinall is just a, the best fight IQ. And I'll tell you this, if he really wants to win, okay, he really wants to win, he's going to stay as far away from this freaking monster as possible, okay? He's not going to get involved in any of these slugfests. At most, okay, at most, he's going to maybe go for takedowns. And But if he doesn't get a submission, I think that this fight could go the distance, and I think Aspinall can win by decision against what everybody is saying. So we're going to try it. God help us. Aspinall by decision plus 1,400. I mean, that's just throwing money in the trash can, but we're going to do it anyway. Five rounds of heavyweights. I have to tell you something. Same thing happened last week. I was one click away, by the way, of playing. uh, You were there. You saw this when I was doing this podcast. One click away from playing um, Almeida by decision, just hoping that big boy could last five rounds, and he did. And I just didn't do it. It was like plus 30 to 1 or whatever it was. So we're going to take another shot at this. Aspinall by decision plus 180. Uh, excuse me, plus 1,400 for 180. So let's try to review like all the atrocious plays that we've made. It's kind of hard because some of these are out of the uh, – are out of the uh, – out of the bet slip now, but Jamal Emmer's like very passive but low fight IQ. Who who are we to bet him inside the distance? I don't know, some kind of idiot. So we did it. Uh, Joshua Van against uh, Rojas. Uh, Van has never wrestled before, so why not play, play him by submission? Let's go. John Castaneda. Um, we're gonna fade the the hipster play of the week and play Castaneda plus whatever that was the one sixty. Uh, Mark Madsen. I mean, he's 38. Jared Gordon's just better everywhere, essentially. It, it, he'll make it taken down once or twice, but he'll fight back from that. He has better cardio, and he got robbed a couple of times. I mean, this is easy, so why not? We'll take Madsen. And by the way, again, if you play Madsen after round one, that's that's okay also, as long as he wins round Uh Sadie Koff versus Borshev. Um we play Borshev by decision because honestly, the only way he's going to win is by KO. So why not play him by decision? Sounds good to me. Rebecca, who's going to roll over this guy, but if he doesn't and the guy can survive with his big reach for three rounds, we get plus 250. Uh, Tabitha Ricci only plus 145 with no path to victory. I don't know why we're doing that. I guess because we want to lose. Why we're playing and Alejandro Costa plus only 160 when I think it's 29 to one touts playing uh Ursteg. I guess we're just kind of psycho. Diego Lopez, the his way of winning is getting that submission off his back or at the most getting a KO because he's so much better on the feet. Going to a decision? I don't know why we're doing that. I guess this we want to lose. If that's not bad enough for Vola, you know, we're playing him by KO, right? Because that's the way he's going to win. No, we're not doing that. We're playing Saint Denis because he's probably going to win by submission or decision. No, we can't do that. We have to play Frivola, maybe, just maybe that wrestling that we've heard so much about kind of rears its head when maybe Santini is going for the takedowns. Maybe we get a little reversal and a, and a rear naked choke at 12 to 1. Um, probably not. Jessica Andraj, uh, again, I mean, she's totally done. I don't know why we're throwing 180 away on her, but we'll try it uh, by decision. Tom Aspinall by decision. I mean, for real. I mean, this is this is me just being just, you know, just a moron. I mean, because obviously this is fight is coming, finishing in the first round and a half. I mean, why are they even putting a line up on, on winning by decision? I mean, we all know that it's going to finish in the first two rounds, but if it doesn't, and this fight becomes one of those heavyweight slog fests, who knows? So we are obviously going to lose all 12 of these. So now we have to come up with something in the main event where we'll be getting 13 to one. So let's just take a look and talk through this a little bit. So unfortunately, this fight has been analyzed to death 
we have probably 50% of the people on the Pereira side, 50% of the people on the Prohaska side. The one thing I will say is that most people do believe that if um, Pereira wins, it's going to be by KO. Uh, and if Prohaska wins, it's going to be either by submission or maybe by decision. So those variations we can't bet. Um, and unfortunately, let's let's look at some of the contrarian ones. So Pahea by decision, I think, is probably live as far as being a contrarian option. But the problem is it's not good enough to get me 13 to 1, right? I don't imagine. Plus 850. And that's pretty close, but you know what? It's not uh, it's not good enough. What about uh uh what we so what we can do, so we can't really do anything on the Pahea side except accepts pay it by submission. Can we do that? I don't think we can. But what we can do is play Prohaska by KO, which has not been really uh, considered as, as likely. Problem with that is that we can't, you know, it, this is not going to be big enough. So Prohaska by KO is plus only 200. So what we're left with are two options. Either Pahea by submission, or, or we pick a round for Prohaska to get the KO. So let's take a look at some of these. KO round one, KO round two, KO round three. So for us to even do this, it's got to be round four or five, round four or five KO. So we're going to try, oh my God. Are we really going to do this? It's got to be either Prohaska by KO in round four or Pahea by submission. Okay, so what do we want to root for? That's, I guess, the best thing. What do we want to root for? I think, well, here's here's the thing. Every The last, like, four cards, whatever thing I was going to click on and didn't wins. So I think whichever one that I play, I think whichever one that I play is the one that you guys should play. How about that? I can't, I can't come with that anything better than that. This one is, by the way, this one is the best play. I'll have to tell you. Pahea by decision plus 850. That really has to be the best play. So now I've been a, a complete ultra fraud house, and I've given you three things, right? You can bet them all, right? But if this is not what we're doing here, we got to pick one. So either Pahea by decision plus 850, Prohaska in round four plus 1800, or Pahea by submission. All right, we'll go, we'll go Prohaska round four plus the 180. Do, do we want to be wimps? You want to do a 60 on all of them? No, it's no good because it's not going to get our money back. So Prohaska, round four for 180. And that'll do it. It's going to be a fun card watching me go 13 and 0, uh, 0 and 13. Uh, if you follow everything I say, you could go, you could be worse if you want because you could play the Madison after round one thing in addition, and you could play these two others. So if you really want to be part of Sheets World, you could actually try to go 0 and 16. So there you have it. All right. Uh, that'll do it. Good luck, everybody.